SQL, Structured Query Language. SQL is a language for handling database CRUD. Create, read, update, and delete. With SQL, you can create databases and tables, select specific pieces of data, make changes, remove data, and more. Much, much more. So pour yourself a pan-galactic gargle blaster because we are going on a scenic tour of SQL space. Future users of large data banks must be protected from having to know how the data is organized in the machine. EF COD. This is the opening line from the paper, a relational model of data for large shared data banks. In 11 pages, Ted Codd laid the foundation for relational databases. A relational database consists of a collection of tables. Each table has a defined set of columns and rows containing data. Each row is called a record. The data between tables can be related to each other. This is why they are called relational databases. Taken together, the collection of tables in a database is called the schema. So when you are designing a database, you could say that you are scheming. In the beginning, there was nothing, a digital void. To begin our SQL tour, let us turn on our server. It is running a database management system, DBMS for short. First, we connect to the DBMS. Then we create a database. You create a database using the bizarre command, create database. After the command, specify the database name. This will create a database called social network. Because this is precisely what the world needs, another social network. By the way, do not worry about which DBMS is being used. Focus on the SQL. Focus on the SQL. Next, we need to fill this database with some tables. To make a table, you use the, wait for it, create table command. You specify the name of the table and then type in open parentheses. Inside, you specify the columns this table will have. This table will be called users and have four columns, user ID, first name, last name, and email address. After the name of each column, you enter the data type. Once we have listed all of the columns, we close the parentheses and enter a semicolon. SQL commands generally end in a semicolon. Execute. This creates a new table called users in our social network database. But wait, what if you are a typical human and forgot a column in the users table? You can change an existing table by using the alter table command. You first specify the table you would like to change, then enter the add command. Next, you provide the name and type of the new column. This command will add a new column called encrypted password. You do not want to store a user's password in plain text. As you can hear, I'm using my serious voice. We will have a serious discussion about the seriousness of security with my serious voice another time. Execute. This SQL command added a new column to our users table. If there is a part of a database you no longer want or need, you can cancel its existence with the drop command. To eliminate the email column, you alter the table and drop the email column. To delete the users table altogether, you execute drop table users. And to wipe the slate completely clean, you can even drop the database. Here we are, back to where we started. Now that you have seen the essentials for creating, altering, and deleting databases, let us visit the various ways you can interact with the data. Suppose we have a database with three tables, users, movies, and purchases. These tables can be created using the create database and create table commands. In this diagram, we display the name of the table at the top and the columns in the table below. You can insert data into the database using the insert into command. Let us add a record to the movies table. You first type insert into followed by the table name. Next, inside parentheses, specify the columns you will be providing data for. Then the command values, followed by the corresponding data in parentheses. And do not forget the semicolon. Execute. Our data has been inserted into the movies table. But how can we be sure? To look at the data, you use the select statement. After select, you specify the columns of data you would like. If you enter an asterisk, it will return all columns. The from command is used to specify the table name. Execute. Our one movie is there. 
Notice in the Users and Movies tables, there are columns with names ending in ID. These are numbers which uniquely identify each row of data. Such values are called primary keys. We provided the value for Movie ID, but most respectable database software will create the IDs for you. So going forward, we will not specify the User ID or Movie ID. If you only want to view the movie titles, you can perform a select with just the titles column. As before, you use from to identify the table to select from. Execute. Let us now populate our database with a lot more data. Generally, you will use software to insert data. Let us now select all the movies and their prices. Notice they were not in any particular order. You can order by price with the order by command. By default, the records are sorted in ascending order. You can sort in descending order with the desk keyword. You can change existing data with the update statement. If you want to update the price of JAWS, you specify the table to update. Use the set statement to specify the new value. And then use a where statement to restrict the update to specific records. Execute and verify the change. To get rid of data, Use the delete from statement. After delete from, enter the table name. Next, enter a where statement to specify which records to delete. This will delete the movie Star Wars from the database. A quick select will confirm its disappearance. Much like the original scene where Han shot first. But we are just getting started. What if the data you need is scattered across multiple tables? The SELECT statement gives you the ability to choose data from multiple tables in a process called JOINS. A related solution would be to create a virtual table called a VIEW. This table-like object collects matching data from multiple tables and makes it easily accessible as if you were working with a single table. And what about speed? When you execute a SELECT statement with a WHERE clause, the database may have to look at every single record in the table to find matching data. If there are billions of records, this can be slow. An index can be created to ensure your queries are fast and efficient. Transactions provide you with the ability to make several changes and ensure that your data is safe if there is a problem partway through the process. The list of features is long. Today we have seen the essential SQL statements, the ability to manage a database schema with the create, alter, and drop commands the statements used when working with data. Select, insert, update, and delete. But now, it's time to take that can of air and clean out your keyboard. Grab a towel, don't panic, and click subscribe. Because you will want to hitch a ride on this ship. <laughs>